This lesson is on symmetry in nature, and what we're going to be creating today is a symmetrical monkey. Now you could also create, if you want to make a sloth, it's all similar um, shapes, you could turn it into basically whichever creature you'd like that has long arms. Um, but a monkey's easy and quick and it's always fun to do. Um, these are some examples that, are that were done. Uh, just the base coats were done by third grade students, and they're, they're not quite finished yet. They haven't finished their face or anything, but I just want to show you a few examples done by kids. Now you can choose any color. You don't have to do, you know, your browns or natural toned monkeys. You can use your imagination, create any type of a monkey you'd like. The first step is to go ahead and take the paper and fold it in half. And I'm just using a scrap piece of paper. You can see this little mistake here. So you fold it in half, and that way you can find your line of symmetry. And whatever is, uh, here I'll show you the line of symmetry here. Whatever is past the line of symmetry is going to then print on the opposite side. That way you have a monkey that is exactly the same on both sides, and it is symmetrical. So, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to choose just a, a value, a pink value. Just do a, a medium pink value here. Dip my brush in, then I touch the edge. And I'm going to very carefully start. I'm just going with the head. I'm going to leave plenty of room for the arms. So, toward the middle of my page, here's my ex exact center if you want to mark that. Then just above that, I'm going to make just a number one. And this is going to be my head. On one side of the paper, I'm going to just place some paint and I'm going to kind of curve it. So it's going to be kind of an inverted or backwards letter C. Then I'm going to close my paper and press and rub. By pressing and rubbing this paper, what it's going to do is it's going to transfer and print on the other side. And you can see how some of the paint has moved over. Depending on how much you put on, sometimes it even expands. If you look at this, if, if not all of it has transferred over to the other side and mono printed, then go back and you can actually just repaint it a little bit and fix it. If you don't want a little bump at the top, just kind of round that shape. And then mono print again. By doing this, you're assessing your work. If you see a mistake, at this time you can fix those mistakes. All right, I see a little bit of overlapping, but that's fine because I'm going to add some fur texture around my monkey anyways. At least I've got his head. Now, the next part is going to be to continue down his body. So I'm going to make another line on my line of symmetry, and this time I'm going to go out again, leaving a little neckline. I'm just going to go out again, but making it a little bit longer. Now, you want to make sure you have enough paint on here to make a print when you fold. So I'm going to fold, mono print, rub, and I'm rubbing the area where there's paint. You don't need to rub over here. Open up, and wherever you see, if you assess your work, if you see a little mistake, if you want them to be a little bit thicker. I, I think I want my monkey to be a little bit thicker at the shoulders up here, so I'm going to add a little bit more paint. The best thing to do is small baby steps, doing it a little bit at a time, because you don't want to overdo. You don't want to make a really wide monkey like that. Remember, you're only doing it half because the other half mono prints. Some kids were actually doing it, made it too wide out, almost like a circle. You don't want it to look circle shaped, the body. You want it to be oval shaped. So I'm assessing my work here, fixing up where it didn't quite mono print. Okay, then I'm rubbing. You want to make sure you don't want to put too much paint. If I had stuck a puddle of paint on here, it would have blobbed out when I mono printed. It would have pressed and moved. Now, the next step, what I'm going to do is his arms. Now, you can arrange your monkey's arms any way you want. Most of the kids in the examples did the monkeys where they're hanging from a tree. Well, if you want it hanging from a tree, you come off the shoulder and you bring your arm up. If you want the monkey's arm down, maybe he's picking bananas off a tree. It can come down, but you want to remember, whatever you put this side, this, the arm on the other side is going to do the exact same. Um, I'll go ahead and just do a monkey up on the hanging because it seems to be most of the kids that I've been doing this with enjoy that monkey that's swinging from those vines. It's more exciting. So I'm going to go ahead, come off, and I'm going to do the first segment of my arm, which is going to be right to the top of his head. Then the next segment of the arm I'm going to do as it bends. 
And a monkey's arms are a little bit longer than a human arm. So if you measure your own arms, your arm comes down to your elbow. If you put your arms down, the elbow hits the waist. And then the, the other segment's almost the same length. There. Now, make sure you put enough paint. I'm going to add a little bit more to this. And then I'm going to put a little bit more down here. Not so that there's puddles. Because if there's puddles, remember, this is going to expand. So I'm just re-wetting this nicely on both sides. And then I'm going to very carefully print first, just gently rubbing my hand, uh, because I don't want those arms to expand. Then I'm seeing I'm not expanding too much, now I'm just going to close it again and rub it a little bit harder, right in here, so that it prints a little bit better. So again, every step of the way we assess our work. We see what's happening. Sometimes this little texture is okay to leave. It almost gives a furry texture. So in this case, I'm going to leave this. So, you know, sometimes artists want to have less of a print on one side, but in other times they don't. So you just determine how you want your image to look. I, mean, I know I'm going to put some texture with fur, so I'm going to leave that like that. The next step is to go ahead and do his legs. Again, any way you want, but remembering, however you place the leg, and I'm just bringing my brush down, and then I'm going to have it bend again and I'll put a foot on. But you always want to remember, it's always going to be repeated on the other side. So then I turn, rub, and then I open up. Okay, if you don't, again, assess, fix, rub. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to finish this monkey now. Put him in, envir in an environment that you would like. If you want to stick him in a jungle, swinging from vines, trees, whatnot, you add that. You can put in your branch, right in here. Now I'm not going to monoprint anymore. I've got my monkey. I'm good to go. My branches, my vines. I can print vines. I have other lessons that show exactly how to make lines and vines and plants and flowers and trees. So you can go ahead and print these. I'm just using my brush. Let the brush do all the work and it prints it quickly. Right in here. And again, I'm not monoprinting this part. And add your bushes and trees and whatnot. To finish your monkey, what I would do is add all the vines and plants this day. Let the monkey dry. Once the monkey's dry, you can go ahead and finish his face. If you choose to finish the face with a marker, you can. Or you can go back and actually take um, uh, paint. You can put paint in. Uh, one quick and easy way, what I just do is make oval eyeballs, little narrow oval eyeballs, very close to the line of symmetry. I go ahead and put two little ovals or little uh, kind of oval dots for the nose area, the nostrils, and then a mouth. Come across the line of symmetry on both sides equal. It can be straight, it can be as long or wide as you want, and then I just upturn the edges of hair. You can, con you can take uh, colored pencils and go on top of this. This is kind of like dividing his mouth and nose area. So I go ahead and make a little circle here. You can take um, paint. I always like to add a little darker texture then with the paint. So I would then put in some texture lines very carefully with a really thin brush and I don't put much paint on this brush at all. Almost no paint on the tip. See if you can see that. Look at that. Almost no paint. And I'm just stroking in the direction of the, f the, f the fur of the, f of the face. And then I'm adding a little bit of darker fur down here too. So you can go ahead, add texture to where you'd like, add, add fur, decorate them, you can put them in clothes, you can do whatever you want with them. And that's our completed monkey.